Good morning and a warm welcome to our service this morning. Whether joining us on YouTube or Facebook or at Bethel, it's good to share what God has to say to all of us. The service today has the theme of listening to a God who listens to us. For this, I'm ably helped by members of our Tuesday home group. So many thanks to all of you who are taking part. So let's start our time together with prayer. Dear Lord, we gather here together, your flock, your sheep, your people. You are our shepherd and we are gathering into your presence today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We gather here together, though we may not be physically together, we are gathered together in spirit and in truth, for we are one in Christ Jesus. So speak to us, Lord, and let us listen and hear your word. Receive our worship and our praise from our hearts and our souls. Wonderful Lord, most high counsellor, faithful God, we will bless and honour you and follow you. And we ask that you would be with us now by the power of your spirit. Amen.
So, a God who listens to us. One of the many aspects of my faith is that I know that I worship an amazing God, an omnipresent God, a God who is there all the time. Every time I need to talk to someone, he's there. If I need to download, unburden, cry out, ask a question, share a time of sadness or of joy, he's there and he will hear and will listen to what I have to say. To me, he is the only one truly capable of doing this. Most of these conversations are during a quiet time of prayer, but often I do verbalise audibly what I'd like to bring to his attention. Not that he needs me to do this, for he's all knowing, but for me, the person talking, it's a real comfort to know that just in case he's all not already aware, I can share all things without judgment, simply because he knows me, loves me and cares for me. This time with God can also include sharing with him concerns, not only for myself, but for others, for certain situations, not only locally, but globally. At the moment when there is so much uncertainty and unanswered questions, queries, worry and anxiety over everyday life, it's good to know that we are not alone. Someone is listening. In the Bible, in 1 John 5, verse 14, it says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. There are so many examples in the Bible that prove that God hears us and hears our cries to him that it would take too long to list them all. But still, we do sometimes doubt that he's hearing us or listening to our prayers. And we're not alone in this. Even King David, a man described by God himself as a man after his own heart, faced uncertainty about whether God was listening to him. This led him to cry out in Psalm 22, verses 1 to 2, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. On many occasions, through his weaknesses and mistakes, David cried out to God for help forgiveness and mercy, and God heard him, listened and answered his prayers because he loved him. In Psalm 55 verses 1 to 2 it says, Listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my cry for help. 
please listen and answer to me. And in Psalm 4, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. And in Psalm 5, verses 1 to 3, O Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my God and King, for I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. And in Psalm 94, verse 9a, is he deaf, the one who made your ears? Well, in that last example, it's like the psalmist realises is that it's God that's made our ears. So surely he knows best how they work their purpose and their function, and he must therefore know the importance of hearing and listening and know how to. Other psalms and verses from scripture echo this too. Psalm 18 verse 6 says, But I, my dis in my distress I cried out to the Lord, yes I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary, my cry to him reached his ears. And in Psalm 116 verses 1 to 2, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy, because he bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath. And in 1 Peter 3 verse 12, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right and his ears are open to their prayers. And 1 John 5 verse 15, and since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. And that famous verse in Jeremiah 29 verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Some years ago now, we were as a church family here at Bethel keen to listen to God through a time of concentrated prayer and then knowing that he would listen, await his reply. Across that time, before that time and since, we have as a fellowship been given words that we felt were from God. And I was reminded of some of those words the other day. They came up on my Bible app. They were from 2 Chronicles 7 verses 14 to 16. Then one night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as a place for making sacrifices. And it goes on to say, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. This was and is a word for then and for today. God heard us. So we are now going to have a time when we acknowledge God's ability to hear and to listen to us as we pray prayers of intercession, knowing that in faith we will be heard and we will receive a response in his perfect time and will. Let us pray. God, you hear the calls, the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Israel in her exile, crying out for a Messiah. Elizabeth in her barrenness, calling out for a son. Shepherds in their poverty, praying for a saviour. Mary in her innocence, searching for a safe place to give birth. And still today, the voices cry out in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, in China and Hong Kong, in Thailand, 
across Europe and the Americas and here in the UK. The homeless in their vulnerability, asking for a welcome. The rich in their emptiness, longing for acceptance. The lonely in their busyness, crying for communities. The families in their arguments, praying for peace. God, you hear the calls, the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Hear our prayers today and help us where we can to be the answer to someone else's prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father God, we pray for the restoration of our broken world. Please give us the will and discipline to continually seek your word, to renew our minds. We ask that through your power, we might be your hands and feet on this earth. We pray for peace in times of trouble. We think of the violence occurring across Africa, the attacks in northern Mozambique and violence on the streets of Nigeria. We pray for those who are frightened. Please protect their hearts and their bodies and be their refuge and their strength. We pray for the upcoming US presidential elections. We pray the candidates will follow your example, Lord, and conduct themselves with wisdom and grace. We lift up the global COVID-19 pandemic to you, Lord, and pray for an end to sickness and suffering. We lift up our village city and country to you as COVID cases continue to rise. Please guide our leaders with clear thinking and quell any animosity between regions of the UK. We pray for those missing family and friends because of the restrictions or risk to their health. We pray for those living alone and ask you Lord to prompt us if there is someone needing our help. We pray for our schools, for both staff and students, that they might be protected from the virus and can remain safely open this winter. We pray for staff at Addenbrooke's and Hinchinbrook hospitals, that they might meet the heavy demand this winter and for you to keep them well, Lord. We pray against weariness, and that all those needing treatment are cared for. Lastly, we lift up our church over the coming months. We pray for good communication between the fellowship and opportunities to meet safely. We pray for our deacons, home group leaders, and those working tirelessly to bring God's word to us. Please bless them abundantly, Lord, and give them energy, inspiration and wisdom. Above all, we pray for kindness to prevail throughout the fellowship and in our communities. We ask this in your holy name. Amen.
peace this time. Mercy, Lord have mercy. Mercy from our Lord hearts. Psalm 29 Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Us listening to God's powerful voice. Well, as the Psalm 29 that's just been read says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. It's loud. It thunders. Yet why do we often not hear him? Well, we know it's only too easy for the things of the everyday life to crowd in and produce such a cacophony of sound that drowns out what we need to hear from God. And even more so when God may only want to speak, as he did to Elijah, in the still small voice. We really need to take time to hear his voice and more importantly, to listen to what he says or he may have to say to us. Now, for some of you who've learned about this because you're a teacher or you just wanted to better understand it, you may want to know that there is a difference between hearing and listening. Now, just recently, our little three-year-old grandson, who was suffering from a really bad cold at the time, suddenly exclaimed, "Oh!" Nana, my ears aren't listening properly. What he really meant to say was that he couldn't hear very well. And that got me thinking further about the difference between hearing and listening. The chart shows the differences. But just in case it was too much for you to absorb, here's a bit of summary about the differences between hearing and listening. Hearing and listening uses both your ears. Hearing is receiving sound waves through your ears, while listening means hearing and understanding what you've heard. Hearing is part of the five senses, while listening is a choice to hear and analyse what you hear. Hearing is using your ears only, while listening is using your body's other senses. Listening is observing others' behaviour that can add meaning to the message, while hearing is simply receiving sound vibrations. Listening can build relationships with others, while hearing cannot. So, probably a good idea to take care of your ears if you cannot listen when you cannot hear. So, I found these differences quite enlightening 
when using them in relation to how we hear and more importantly, listen to God. Hearing, as it said, you perceive and receive sound waves through your ear, but listening is hearing and understanding what you hear. Some time ago now, I went out for a walk and a quiet time to talk with God. I set off as I usually do with iTunes playing through my earphones and praying. But suddenly I became aware that God was saying, listen to me, hear my voice. How can you do that with your earphones, iTunes blaring away? It was worship songs, I hasten to add. So I took out my earphones and I listened, listened to the sounds around me. At that point, a beautiful robin made an appearance on the hedge beside me and the air was filled with its characteristic call. I heard his voice and listened to God in creation. I shared my experience during a prayer time with Mary and we discussed a little about this subject of listening and hearing. Later, a card from Mary shared the verse from 1 Samuel 3 verses 9 and 10. Speak, your servant is listening. Now that well-known passage and story of the boy Samuel was a good starting point for me to understand the need to hear and to listen. For Samuel, it was difficult to recognise God's voice, to hear or to listen. It says in verse 7 of that passage of the story that he did not yet know the Lord and had never had a message from him before because at the time messages and visions from God were uncommon and even rare. And so it can be hard for some of us too. So how do we hear from God and listen out for what he has to say? Well, some practical ideas come to mind. You can take time in silence and reflection. You can hear God through studying his word. Maybe a particular Bible verse will jump out at you and you'll think, ah, oh, was that from God? Through meditation on a scripture and through prayer. Sometimes when I do that, it's helpful for me to light a candle to um, welcome Jesus, light of the world, into my conversation and into my time and to focus on. Sometimes we can hear through others, through discussions with them. We can hear through Christian podcasts, through talks and sermons. We can hear when we're out and about in God's created world. And we can hear God speaking through music, song, poetry and works of art. You may now be thinking, well, that's OK, but how do I know it's God and not just kind of me in my head? Well, all I can say is, if you're not sure you've heard from God, test this together with a fellow Christian and test it against what God's word says and know that usually you will experience a deep sense of peace about what's been heard if it's from God. Whether this is what you wanted to hear or not. We really need to hear God's voice like any other sounds around us. Not that it is then dismissed, but that it becomes entrenched in our everyday lives, like eating, sleeping, waking. This takes perseverance and patience and is the ultimate goal. So we need to take time to do it and to practice and practice and practice. So in the famous parable of the sower that's in Matthew 13, Jesus has much to say on the need to hear and listen, particularly to God's word. So we're going to read that. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat and then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, 
a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil and underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell onto fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60 and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. This is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes and their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seeds that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about God's kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as has been planted. In that parable, Jesus starts by asking the gathered crowd to listen, to understand, to concentrate, don't just hear me. He then goes on to explain the parable after he's delivered it, again saying, listen. And again, he's saying, don't just hear what I'm saying, but try to understand it, concentrate on it, so that your brains process its meaning. Learn by listening in your consciousness the explanation of the parable will then be better understood. So this is a bit of a challenge for all of us. Is your listening to God and his word a bit like those that Jesus refers to in that parable? Do you hear something from God and then it's taken away from you by doubting? Did I hear? Was that really from God? Maybe that's the devil having an attempt to make us believe that we didn't hear. Do you often hear from God, but your faith foundation is a bit rocky, a bit stony, and so it dies from not being sufficiently rooted in the word? Do you hear, but worry and anxiety, or the love of the things of this world get in the way, and mean that you, what you hear comes to nothing, and it doesn't bear any fruit? Or do we, like the seed sown in the good ground, hear, listen, hear, listen, 
and practice, practice, practice. And try hard to understand and then reap the rewards of your labour of listening and produce fruit, which is God's will for our lives and others. And that harvest may be 30, 60 or a hundred times as much as had originally been planted. So I urge you to really listen for God's voice as he may have something really life-changing to say to you or through you to others. And don't be afraid to act on this or share what he says. A bit unlike the Bible characters who we are about to see, who are finding listening to God a little bit tricky. Evening, Moses. Evening, Jonah. Ah, here comes Jeremiah. Good. Now we can start the meeting. Uh, let's pray. Father, we really want to hear your voice tonight. Yes, Lord, speak so that we have no doubts. And don't let us be distracted by the enemy or the telephone. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Jonah, this is the Lord speaking. What? Oh, uh, it's for you, Moses. Hello? Moses, I have chosen you to be the leader of many. What? Me? What's going on? It's the Lord. Are you sure? I don't know. I'll ask him. Are you sure? Moses, I am the Lord, and I have chosen you for a great work to confront the king of your oppressors. Uh, oh, well, in that case, I think you want Jeremiah. Me? But I don't know what to say. I didn't know I had to have to speak to him tonight. Ask him if he's got the right number. Jonah. Uh, uh, yes. I need you too to travel to a distant hostile city to tell them about me. Ah, oh, I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a bad line, Lord. Did you say you wanted me to stay here and pray for the other two? Oh, hang on. Jeremiah's dying to get a word in. Hello? And you, Jeremiah, I'm appointing as a prophet to my chosen people. Me? But I'm only a teenager. I've got my A-levels to do, and no one ever listens to me, do they? Uh, do they? What? What? Listen, I know each one of you, and I'm calling you to go in my name and to speak my message. So that others will come to love and obey me. But, but I'm too busy. And I'm too young. And I'm too scared. Yes, you're right, you are. But I am all you need. We take time now to reflect on what we've heard so that we can listen and understand what God wants to say. The song that will be played live at Bethel will, for those watching at home, come on the screen as words for you to read.
God speaks in the silence of the heart, and we listen. And then we speak to God from the fullness of our heart, and God listens. And this listening and this speaking is what prayer is meant to be. Well, hello and thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service here at Bethel Baptist Church in Swavesey. Here are the notices for this coming week. The diaconate have been looking at the various prayer sessions that are available and we have uh, decided to make one or two changes to what we have become used to. Now, as far as the private prayer sessions at the church are concerned, it was felt that in view of the numbers that come along each week and the fact that we've reset our clocks to Greenwich Mean Time, which means that the evenings get darker earlier, uh, we have concluded that we will suspend the Sunday evening private prayer session. So there will be no private prayer session this evening. However, the Sunday Sanctuary service will continue to be held on the third Sunday each month. We've also been considering how the Sunday morning prayer session on Zoom fits in with the church being open on a Sunday morning at 10.45 and we have concluded that it would be helpful to those that do attend the prayer meeting on Zoom if we could bring that meeting forward to 9.30 until 10 o'clock, thus giving people that come to the Zoom prayer meeting time to uh, travel to church if they have got their ticket. So in future, the Sunday morning prayer session on Zoom will be at 9.30, not 10 o'clock. The other regular meetings on Zoom plus the private prayer session on Thursday uh, will be held as they usually have been. And next Sunday, the recorded service uh, will be shown at the church at 10.45. Uh, you will need to book a ticket for that. And next week, the service will take the form of an all-age worship service and it will be a youth takeover. And finally, just a word about thank offering gifts. Uh, these can still be either brought to a Sunday service at church or left in an envelope in the church letterbox or otherwise directed to our church treasurer, Wendy Whistler, and although we initially said that we would appreciate gifts arriving by today, the 25th of October, uh, we have now reviewed that time scale and have extended the period through to the end of November, so don't feel that you've missed out on, on uh, bringing your thank offering gift along or getting it to Wendy. As I say, we're quite happy to receive your, your gifts right through until the end of November. I think they are all the notices I have for today. So as we move into this coming week, may you know the Lord's presence with you, guiding ev you every step of the way. May you know his wisdom in all that you do. May you know his peace ruling in your heart, and may your mind be stayed on him and enjoy that perfect peace that comes from fixing our heart and mind on the Lord. Thank you.